Hi guys, you ready for another chapter? I know you are. The good news is, is this one isn't nearly as bad as the last one. And this one will be a lot easier because you actually know some of this stuff now, like the reticular layer of the connective tissue. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, but before we get started, just a couple of basic things. When you're taking notes, don't just write down what you see on the screen. Write down what I say too, because a lot of times, I add extra stuff that are good examples. Um, things that I draw on, on here. So like, you know, there's a picture here, but if I draw something in addition to it, you know, it might be kind of important. Also, I can't, oh, sorry. I can't find the thing. There it is. And also guys, um, your packets, the packets that we work on in class, it doesn't do you any good just to write down the answers the day before. What does you good is to do the worksheets the day that you learn that material or the next day. So that way, when you're working on it and you go, wow, I don't understand this, then you come to me, I help you, we go over it together, I tell you what's right, what's wrong, we fix what's wrong, and you learn from it. Because there's no way that you can leave the whole packet blank, wait until the day before the test, fill it all in when I give it to you, and then be like, yep, I know this stuff, I'm ready for the test, okay? There's, you, you, get, you need to put some effort, a little bit more effort into this, okay? So we'll, we'll figure it out one way or another how to make this work for you. Okay, anyway, so we're starting the skin, which is the integumentary system. And so, a nice little title right there. So the integumentary system uh, basically just in, includes your cutaneous membranes and uh, mostly the skin, the outer layer. There's three main layers to your skin, and we're gonna break each one of these up into individual sections. First one we're gonna do is the epidermis, which as you can see from right here, includes from the very top to this layer right there. We have the dermis, which goes from the end of the epidermis down to right about there. And then once you start hitting fat, then you know you hit the hypodermis, okay? So remember, epi means on top, hypo means below. So it's all in relation to the dermis. So above the dermis, below the dermis. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with the epidermis and I'm gonna show you lots of different pictures so you can get an idea of what, they, what it looks like. Okay, the first epidermis, so we're on layer one right here. These are just some things that are um, important about the epidermis. It's keratinized. Remember, keratin is that protein that is in your fingernails and your hair and it makes it uh, real tough and almost kind of waterproof, okay? So your epidermis is made out of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. You should know that now, okay? You should know what stratified squamous is. Made of four or five distinct layers, and you can kind of see them here. You can see this chunk looks a little different than this chunk looks different than this chunk looks different than this chunk, and so on. So right here, what we see is that they're not distinct layers. I mean, the bottom of this one is very distinct from what's below it, but it's kind of hard to tell the, you know, where does this one end and this one begins. So we're gonna go over what features you look for to try to help you see the difference. Now we put four to five because sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. It depends on where the tissue is taken from. The soles of your feet, very different than the skin on your belly, okay? soles of your feet are very thick because of all the um, pressure that's applied to them. But, you know, some really soft section like your earlobes right here obviously aren't going to have <clears throat> this big thick layer of dead skin because, you know, your earlobes don't need it, I hope. Okay, so let's take a look at those layers. I like. Let's look at what's inside the layers first. Okay, these are the types of cells that you're going to find all intermittent throughout the uh, different layers of the epidermis. First type of cell you're going to find is keratinocytes. Okay, now first of all, the site tells you cell, and this tells you what it makes. Keratin. Keratinocytes. And they produce the keratin. Okay, what is keratin? It's a very fine protein, very thick, very durable. Okay, um, the keratinocytes are tightly connected with desmosomes. Now, I don't know if you remember too much, at least from that picture, but when two cells are next to each other, they're almost super glued together with these little junctions, like staples almost that hold them together. Those are desmosomes. 
So these keratinocytes, and you can see, it's really hard to tell, right in this area, because they do look very similar to everything else. So that's why I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of pictures. Uh, but the keratinocytes, what they do is they're the ones who produce the keratin, and they're stuck there because of these tight junctions that hold them in place. They originate from the deepest layer, so that means they come from this bottom layer right here. And there's millions of these cells that rub off you every single day. Um, so your body's always constantly trying to replace them to make more. Okay, we also have melanocytes. So melano stands for melanin, site cell. Melanocytes are spider-shaped cells that make melanin. So now I don't know where they get, I'm going to make a different color so you can see this. Right there and right there. Now I'm sorry, I don't see a spider in there. But in drawings, it looks like a spider. But in real, yeah, I don't see that. So they say that they're spider-shaped cells that make melanin. Melanin, as you probably know, is what's uh, responsible for giving you freckles and skin color. So where do we find these? Usually in the deepest layer. So as you can see, they're at this very bottom layer right here. And the melanin will accumulate into little granules called melanosomes. Zome just means body, okay? So um, like a chromosome, chromosomes. So the zone just means body, melano means melanin. So little, little bodies of melanin. So maybe like there's a granule, there's a granule, there's a granule. You can see, see them in there. And what do we have melanin for other than to give us our beautiful skin color? Mine is pale white. Melanin, its job is to basically, they're little umbrellas inside of your cells and their job is to shield the nucleus of all your cells from UV radiation, because UV radiation, bad. What do they do? They cause mutations to your DNA, and that can cause skin cancer. We don't like that, that's bad. So it's nice to have melanocytes in it and the melanosomes, because they make little umbrellas inside of our cells to help us from getting skin cancer, yay. We also have these things called Merkel cells. I like that word, Merkel. Merkel cells are spiky hemisphere-shaped cells and you can actually see it down here. They colored it blue. See, now that one looks like a spider to me. Um, and what they do is that they are associated with the nerve. So you can actually see that the blue cell is attached to this yellow sensory nerve right here. By the way, here's a melanocyte. See how it kind of spreads its fingers through all the different cells? That's what they, they should say spider web-like, not spider-like. Um, because you could see all the, it just reaches out like that. Okay, anyway, Merkel cells, they are basically your touch receptors. It's what, so when someone touches you, you can tell the difference between a finger, a feather, um, a hair. You know, you can tell the difference because of those cells. They also help you to determine heat and pressure and all sorts of other things, like itches, that deal with sensation. So those are called Merkel, Merkel cells. Merkel, Merkel. Okay. Next type of cell we have are called Langerhans, or Langerhans' cells. And Langerhans was the guy who figured out these types of cells. So of course he gets something named after him. Langerhans cells look very much like the other cells as well, um, but they have this clear area around them and a very thick uh, nucleus inside. Langerhans cells are basically macrophages. Remember macrophages, what does that mean? Big eater. Okay, so he's a macrophage and his job is to get the immune system going. So if a little bacteria works its way in here, you could guess that the Langerhans cell is going to um, kind of start the process of, hey, foreign invader, let's get him out of here. These Langerhans cells, they come from the bone marrow. Bone marrow, if you remember, also makes blood. Well, macrophages are a blood component and so they come from the bone marrow and they kind of migrate, do, 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 do. they set up home and that's their new spot. So they're born in the bone, but then they move to your skin because they like it there. Okay, layers. We're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna go up to the surface. So the first one is a stratum. Stratum means layer. Basal means the base. So it's the base layer. It is the deepest layer attached to the dermis along a wavy border. So if we look right here, we see that there's this kind of separation like that. Eee, okay, that's the dermis. This is a lot of connective tissue down here. 
And so you can almost kind of see where you might be able to separate that. That is a stratum basal, uh, basal, basal, depends on where you want to put the emphasis on which syllable. Get it? If it no. Uh, so stratum basal, deepest layer, attached to the dermis along the wavy border, kind of wavy. Sometimes it very, it's really wavy like this. Sometimes it's kind of like eh, a wave like that. It's made out of a single layer of keratinocytes. So all these little cells down here are all keratinocytes. So they make keratin, they make keratin cells. Now this area is constantly growing and then each of these cells work their way up. So what's a cell that starts out in the stratum basal will after a little while end up here and then here and then here and then here and then eventually falls off. So if you have really dry skin and you go like that, you'll see all these little flakes falling off and those are all the old cells as they're dead falling off. Okay, but they all started out down here as keratinocytes in the stratum basal. So they all undergo rapid mitosis because if you lose your cells and you don't replace them, you're eventually gonna you know, have a hole in your skin and that would be bad. So they do a lot of mitosis to make up for all the ones that you're constantly um, you know, throwing away. And these cells are this layer. This layer also can contain melanocytes, which are the melanin making cells, okay? So bottom layer, it's usually a little bit darker because of the big nuclei. They absorb a lot of the purple stains, so you can see these big celled nuclei with purple stains inside. Okay, going one up is a stratum spinosum. So stratum, layer, spinosum, spiny. Okay, easy, there's your Latin for today. These, this one is several cell layers thick. So it's above the basal, so here's the basal layer, and kind of before this dark purple layer right here, so it's all this stuff in between. All right there, it's all right there, all that stuff. And it contains a web-like system of filaments that are tension-resisting bundles of pre-keratin filaments. So they're almost keratin, but not quite. This allows your skin boink, to spring back, boink, even here, boink, like that. And so the stratum spinosum is very, uh, is why you can't pull your skin much farther than that. Although there are some people who have a disorder that there's a problem with these filaments and they can like totally stretch their skin up to here. It's crazy, it's really scary looking. So because of this layer, it allows your skin to be flexible but not overly flexible. Also in here, we find melanin granules. So remember that's when the melanocytes accumulate their melanin and it makes a little granule. Kind of like a little pepper crystal is almost kind of what it looks like. And so there might be little chunks of melanin floating around. If I had brown, I would make these brown. But so there might be little chunks of melanin granules in here. And then also Langerhans, all the little Langerhans cells kind of dispersed randomly throughout there. So stratum spinosum, several cell layers thick, has pre-keratin filaments, makes your skin somewhat um, stretchy. Now when you get older, this layer tends to get thinner, which is why when you get older, you do this and it stays. Ooh, and slowly goes back. Try it on your grandma and grandpa, they'll love it. Okay, third layer, stratum granulosum. The granulosum, doesn't that sound like a, a uh, Harry Potter? Stratum granulosum. No, okay. Uh, granules, uh, color, like speckles of color. This is three to five cell layers thick where the keratinocytes start to flatten. Okay, so if you look over here, what I have highlighted, or they had highlighted and I stole, see how this dark layer, can you see how the cells are kind of flat now? Where these are still round, flat, flat, okay? So that's how we can tell the stratum granulosum. Also, it's much darker than the layers above it and below it. So we have the stratum basal, we got stratum spinosum, now we have stratum granulosum, okay? So we can actually see dark nuclei, uh, more cytoplasm, and now they're flattened, squished, okay? So the, uh, as they become these flat cells, your cytoplasm kind of goes away, which means all the organelles inside begin to disintegrate. They just disappear, don't need them anymore. And they get something called keratin, uh, keratohyalin. Okay, so the hyalin kind of sounds like a cartilage type thing. K 
Kerato. So Kerato Highland and Lamulated Granules are just these little crystals that grow inside and just makes it a little bit thicker and tougher, harder to break through. So Kerato Highland is what forms keratin, so that's why it's really tough. Laminate, lamulate, la, bleh, lamulated granules prevent water loss. So it's because of this layer right here is why we don't um, have to drink severe mass quantities of water every day because this helps to uh, store the water. Okay, and then we've got the fourth layer, stratum lucidum. Lucidum means a see-through. So stratum lucidum is a few rows of clear, flat, dead keratinocytes with indistinct boundaries. So you can see, you can kind of tell the difference, but not really. So they're kind of see-through. So there's right there and there, a little bit over there, a little bit some there, right around there. Um, visible only in thick skin. So this is that layer that may or may not be there. So in thick skin, like the soles of your hands right here, if you have calluses, the bottom of your feet, you will have this layer. If not, if it's like your cheek or your earlobes, well then you're probably not gonna have that layer on there. So stratum lucidum, see-through layer, dead cells, and uh, kind of hard to tell the boundaries of them. And the last layer, five, stratum corneum. The corny, uh, corny, <laughs> means hard. And so um, stratum corneum is this top layer, kind of like right there. These guys are completely dead. There's nothing alive in those cells whatsoever. 20 to 30 cells thick, so a lot of flat cells all squished like that. Counts for protection from penetration, abrasion, and water. So when you scratch your skin, it's a stratum corneum that's preventing your fingernail from slicing right through you. Now, so some things it is tough to, but other things it's not. You know, if I take a razor, you know, obviously it's going to cut through. So it protects fairly well, but not completely well. So stratum corneum. So we have stratum, stratum basal, bleh, basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum uh, lucidum, and stratum corneum. C-L-G-S-B. Your job. Make up something stupid that's going to help you remember this. Okay? Cheese Legos go sorely bacon. I don't know. You know what I mean? Come up with something stupid that's going to make sense to you. And then so tomorrow, we're going to see who has the best one. So that way we can, you know, go with that from now on. So C-L-G-S-B. They all start with stratum, 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 stratum. But this part is the part we need to remember. So from the bottom, this is the top, C-L-G-S-B. See if you can come up with something for that, okay? And here's just another picture kind of showing it in a drawing with all the different bits and pieces in there. Here's deep, so stratum basal. This is basically one cell layer thick. You can see the desmosomes right there, which are kind of super gluing them all together. Nucleus, hemidesmosome, don't worry about that. There's basement membrane. Okay, stratum spinosum right here. And so this is where we have the keratin. Remember, they're gonna kind of work their way through in between the cells like that. See little granules uh, making color. Uh, what else do you need to know about this one? So keratin and lamellated bodies are found in here. <coughs> Stratum granulosum, so this layer, the third layer right here. What do we see? We see a lot of keratohyaline granules. So all the little polka dots makes it a little bit darker. Um, lamellar bodies released lipids. This is where cell death occurs. Uh, cell death. We have the stratum lucidum, the see-through layer um, right here. It's very small. Only shows up in thick areas. So this one is the iffy one that may or may not be there. And then we have the stratum corneum, which is all these dead cells flaking off. And this is what bed bugs like to eat. This is what, you have just all the things that live in your carpet, this is what they're eating. And this is what 80% of the dust in your house is, is dead skin cells. Yum, 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 yum. All right, so there's keratin in there. There's some lipids in there, which kind of helps what makes it waterproof and uh, falls off a lot. All right, so C, L, G, S, B. Give me your best shot, all right? We'll go over this tomorrow. See you later. Bye. If I can find the off button. Ah, there it is. Bye.